passing along six tips to make sure that your Instagram profile is totally buttoned down and sorted if you're on a mission to build a successful flower business. Hello friend, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel where we focus on all things marketing, money, and managing your mindset, specifically for floral designers and those beautiful humans who are on a mission to make money through the world of flowers. And today I wanted to focus in and make sure that you have everything sorted when it comes to having your Instagram profile all in alignment. I know it might feel a bit redundant to kind of wind back the clock and make sure we have the basics sorted, but in looking at so many floral designers Instagram profiles, I see so many of the same mistakes because so much of what we need to do is understand how our customers behave and how they consume our Instagram bio and the things that they're looking for to then take this relationship to the next level. So here is six things to help you cover off the basics and make sure you're pointed in the right direction when it comes to getting your Instagram profile sorted. Tip number one, truly covering off the basics here and just thinking about your profile name. This is true for our business name as a whole. <laughs> Remember, there are going to be times when you're on the phone with a customer and you need to say your business name out loud. So it's just really important to kind of give it that sense check and be like, okay, if I say my business name out loud, what might it sound like? What might be the audio challenges that I run into when I'm trying to communicate this business name to my customers? We have a major advantage in our industry that if a username is already taken, you can always add studio, flowers, florist to the end of it. And in many cases, it will become available. Tip number Two, thinking about your profile photo. So for floral designers, there are two main choices. One, use your logo. Two, use a picture of you. But please don't just put up a generic picture of flowers. <laughs> We have such a distinct advantage in our industry where your face, because you're probably the creative director in your business and or your business is even named after you, it's so important that you get to actually show up and be the face of your business. Or two, if you don't wanna be the face of your business, that just going out there and creating a nice logo that you could put in your profile picture is so important. It actually does contribute to building the brand and the overall vibe of your business it looks way more professional than just another generic picture of flowers. So a picture of you or use your logo. Tip number three, make sure you go over and you switch your profile to a professional account. The reason I will suggest a professional account is twofold. The first one is the minute that you switch over to a professional account, you'll see that your profile will show up with more contact information, which means that if your customers find you, they can very easily send an email, call you, get directions to wherever it is that you are. It's so much better from a customer service experience perspective to be able to provide that contact information right up front and makes it so much easier for your customers to then reach out if they have questions. The second reason I will tell you to switch to a professional account is with the analytics. Because as much as you might love understanding how many people liked your photo, the whole point of a flower business is to sell floral design services. A big component of that is making sure that when you're posting to Instagram, that your customers are taking action, which means that they're visiting your profile and then they're clicking the link in your profile. You wanna make sure that as many of your posts are instilling that action and the only way to know if it's working is through the analytics on Instagram. So your professional profile will give you access to those analytics. So much more powerful and so much more insightful to know that you're moving in the right direction. The only way to do that is through a professional account. And tip number four is writing the words in your Instagram bio. Now this is something to be taken very seriously. <laughs> you have 150 characters to summarize your entire business. 150 characters is not many characters, but 
I also see so many floral designers completely miss the opportunity to sell their customers and really connect with them in terms of understanding how you can help them. So there's four things I want you to think about when you're writing your Instagram bio. And the first one is, what is the service that you offer? You offer more than just flowers and gifts. <laughs> Get really specific in terms of playing around with the language that you want to summarize the service that you offer your customers. And then point number two, make sure it is obvious as to what your delivery or your service area footprint is. Remember, your customers are going to find you and they might be based all the way around the other side of this beautiful planet. If they don't know that you're based or could do deliveries in Sussex, or Sydney, Australia, or Manhattan, or Los Angeles, you're probably going to lose the sale because the minute that there is some uncertainty, they're just gonna move on to the next business. So please make sure that your location is in your profile. Better yet, if you follow the previous tip and you set up with a professional profile, it's going to link your location in there However, most of us actually will do a delivery or do weddings and events or offer our service in a broader location. So make sure that that's really, really, really clear in your bio. And tip number three, when it comes to thinking about your bio, is getting really, really creative and insightful and impactful <laughs> with how you describe your design aesthetic. Yes, in that 150 characters, I want you to think about how you can very eloquently, but very simply describe your design aesthetic to your customers, because this is going to help you build a better relationship and they're gonna know that they have landed in the right place. So include a couple of words that really evoke the vibe, the emotion, the mood that you're putting out into the world, and it really does create a difference. And then part number four of your bio, I told you there was a lot to think about, but part number four is thinking about what is the action you want your customer to take next? Are you gonna ask them to order online via the link in your bio? Are you gonna ask them to DM you with questions? Are you gonna ask them to book a consultation online? Whatever the next action is that you want your customers to take, include that in your Instagram bio because our customers need to be told what to do next. It's not gonna be obvious to them to necessarily click the link in your bio to order flowers online unless you actually spell it out for them. I know this can feel very blunt and very like simplified, but I promise you it's so incredibly important. And tip number five, I want you to go in and just throw your next 12 to 15 images up on your bio. So if you're just starting from scratch, I want you to clean slate, go in there, upload your 12 to 15 images, answer some frequently asked questions in the captions, and then you can start posting on a regular basis. I also follow this rule too, if I wanna revamp my feed because I feel like it's really cluttered or messy or just kind of getting out of control. Really starting to curate your feed and then answering your customer's questions in the captions is a game changer when it comes to leveling up your Instagram and connecting with higher value customers. But I also know some of you are going to resist that idea because you're convinced that it's all about engagement. Nope. <laughs> engagement doesn't sell flowers, my friends. Actual action, getting them to click the link in your profile and get to your website is what sells flowers. So don't worry about engagement. If you ever wanna go in and reset the images in your feed, you can always go in and delete things and or just go in and upload a whole whack 12 to 15 images in one go so that you can hit reset on your feed. And tip number six, don't forget about your Instagram highlights. This is such an incredible opportunity to bring your customers into your business to show them what's happening behind the scenes and get a little bit more action and movement in terms of how you actually tell the story. So there's four key highlights that I want you to compile, curate, gather, and use on your Instagram bio. The first one is about us. <laughs> 
I know, it sounds really simple, doesn't it? But I want you to go on somewhere like Canva and look at their templates and then you can use that and you can create your own very pretty, very simple little series of tiles that you can upload to your Instagram stories and then save to a highlight that literally is about us. And then number two is behind the scenes. So if you're off doing a setup at a venue, if you're at the wholesalers, if you're at the growers, if you're packing the van, if you're in the studio, if you're setting up your shop, go out there once a week, once every couple of days, take a couple of 15 second or 30 second videos, upload a couple of pictures and start to really compile and show your customers what's happening behind the scenes. Category number three on your highlights is going to be your portfolio of your recent work. Yes, your clients will look through this portfolio. So please make sure it's up to date and relevant in terms of the kind of work, the kinds of clients you wanna be attracting to your business and go in there, refresh it once a month, once every couple of weeks. Don't forget that that stuff is up there. <laughs> It could be up there for like 78, 96 weeks and you might have completely forgotten about it. So if it's been a hot minute since you've looked at your Instagram highlights, go back and look at some of those images that are in your recent work. Highlight, delete, remove, add, refresh some new ones as you like. And then category number four for your Instagram highlights is frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. So think about the last question that a customer has asked you and then create a story series or take a picture and explain your answer on that still and then save it to your FAQs. These four highlights are so incredibly helpful from converting those people who find you through a super smart Instagram hashtag strategy. And then they're going to read the information in your bio, they will look at your Instagram highlights and flip through, look at your recent work, see what's happening behind the scenes, understand what you're all about. They will love you because you're answering questions ahead of time. They will literally fall in love with you <laughs> before you even know that they exist. It's so fun. So Instagram highlights are the last thing that you get to sort out on your Instagram profile. I know. I went through a lot of things in this video, but go back, rewind, make some notes, and then go out there and take action. Do not underestimate the impact of your Instagram profile and your highlights and what you write in your bio and the image that you use and the name that you use in your bio and the images that are on your feed. It all contributes and it all matters. My friend, I hope that these six tips are helpful. Even if you've been a designer for decades, go back, just have a new look at your Instagram profile and make sure that it meets your expectations and that you've checked off these six must haves. And as always, my friend, if you know anybody who could benefit from watching this little tutorial, share it with them. I hope that you have the most amazing week and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.